Hi, friends. Uh, this is Landon Whitson. I'm the executive of the Senate of Mid-America, and uh, joining me is Brian Ellison. Brian is the stated clerk of both the Senate of Mid-America and Heartland Presbytery. Uh, in the last month, because of social distancing, uh, these isolation uh, measures because of a public health crisis, obviously Presbyterians have had to do a lot of online meetings. And one of the things that uh, Brian has had to become almost an expert in uh, pretty quickly is how to run an efficient meeting. Um, so one of, so I've, I've asked Brian if he would be willing to uh, do a few training videos. We just did one for people who are running uh, these meetings, but we thought it would also be helpful for those of us who participate in the meeting. And so I've asked Brian if he would take some time to walk us through, us participants, us commissioners, us delegates, walk through how do we get onto a Zoom meeting? How do we, uh, how, how do we participate in the meeting in really effective ways that makes our participation helpful for every uh, for everyone else and for the meeting in general. Brian, thanks for doing this. I think people are going to find it really helpful. It is my pleasure, Landon. Thank you for the opportunity. You bet. So I get this email from my clerk. It says, hey, join this meeting. What do I do? What's the very first thing that I do? So uh, joining a Zoom meeting means you're going to need to have a laptop or a tablet or a smartphone that can uh, show a picture and that you can use as a communication device during the meeting. Um, I would strongly encourage you, especially if you're talking about a lengthy meeting or a meeting where there's complicated matters to discuss, like a presbytery meeting usually, uh, to, to try to get to your computer, uh, your desktop or your laptop computer. Um, it usually has a camera uh, and then it also provides more monitor space to see what's going on. Um, if you have the ability to set up with a with a connected monitor or to give yourself more monitor space. The more monitor space you have, the, the easier you'll find it to use Zoom. But don't be discouraged if you don't have that. You can see everything you need to see even on, a, on an iPad or on a, uh, a tablet computer of some kind. What if I don't have, uh, what, what if I don't have access to my computer? I don't have, a, I don't have that, uh, but somehow I've been able to get the papers. Is there a way that I can, is there a way I can participate in the meeting um, just with my normal sheet of paper that I normally bring to presbytery meeting or, or, or to session meeting? Is there a way that I can participate? So you can, uh, of course, uh, you, you can log in from your smartphone. If you have a smartphone, uh, that's probably all you really need. You won't be able to look at documents on your phone because it's just not big enough, but you'll be able to see the faces of the people talking. And that's what you should do. When you do get the communication from your uh, host of your meeting, um, it will almost certainly come with a link that you can click on with a single touch um, and it will take you to, uh, to the Zoom app. If you don't already have the Zoom app on your phone or your tablet or your computer, it will invite you to download it. Uh, you also can participate through a, a regular web browser um, on your computer, but, but I'd really recommend you allow it to download the app. It only takes a minute um, and you'll have a lot more functionality. It works a lot better. Um, uh, if you, instead of having a link, just have a meeting ID number, um, you can go to the Zoom app in one of those places and just enter the meeting ID number and it will take you to your meeting. Okay, so Brian, we've gotten into the meeting. I've gotten myself into the meeting. Um, why don't you show me what I might be, what I might be looking at? And for the purposes of this, um, you've made me the host and you are the participant. So why don't you, why don't you show us uh, what we're going to be seeing? Walk us through that. You got it. So uh, one of the things that, that you first want to know when you get on a call is what you're looking at. Uh, and up here in the right hand corner, there's a place where you can choose whether you're going to see all of the people in the meeting or just the person who's currently speaking. Mm -hmm. What we're looking at now is called gallery view. It shows you all the people in the meeting. And that's kind of fun, especially if you have a large meeting and the pictures start getting smaller and smaller and it looks like the Brady Bunch and and then they get smaller still, and you can have 49 people on the screen at the same time. Um, and you can scroll through pages of pictures of people. And I find gallery view is really helpful when you've got, you know, a handful of people, maybe a committee meeting, somewhere between right. six and nine. It's nice to see everybody's, everybody's face. Right. It's not hard to figure out who's talking. Right. But Especially since hundred... there's that green outline around the, uh, the particular window of the person who's talking. It looks yellow on my screen, but it's oh. green. That's fine. I believe you. <laughs> So, but if you want to just see the person who's talking, or at least the one who's making noise, use the speaker view. 
And this will just allow you to focus on one person at a time, which uh, will show anyone except yourself. Um, so even though I'm the one talking right now, the, it's, showing, uh, it's showing the last person who was talking, which in this case is Nan. Make sense? Absolutely. We'll go back to gallery view. Um, the other thing to know right up front is about what's happening with your microphone. Mm. Host of the meeting can turn everyone's microphones on and off at the same time, um, or you can control your own microphone. And I recommend that unless instructed by the, uh, the host of the meeting otherwise, you, when, you're, when you're going to be making some noise in the room uh, or stepping out or, or whatever, go ahead and Brian, I can't hear you. Oh, uh, that forgot to speak myself before talking, which happens in a meeting. Don't worry about it, but remember that anytime you're called on to speak, you're probably going to first need to unmute yourself. And when you're done. There we go. All right. Um, so that's, those are kind of the things I think about first when I join a meeting. But the really cool stuff in Zoom is, uh, and I think the things that are going to make your meeting work well, are all going to be on this little button at the bottom, the participants button. Um, now, I'm going to click that, and it's going to pop out a window, which sometimes it just pops up on the right-hand side of your screen over there, but sometimes it pops out into its own window, um, depending on how you have your computer set up. And so I've got mine in this window, um, and that's what I'm going to show you a few things with. Um, in a meeting when you want the moderator's attention, and of course, you need to find out how your meeting is operating. Uh, they may be not doing it this way, but this is how I encourage hosts to lead a meeting, you can use this button that says raise hand. It's down here on the left at the bottom of this participants box. When I do that, it's going to not only uh, put a hand in the participants box, it's also going to put for the host to see, you won't see it, but the host will see that uh, a little hand on the screen that tells them uh, they should call on me. Um, and then Landon, you're the host, so when you're done looking at my hand raised, you can lower it and it's gone. Uh, similarly, we use this button for uh, yes and no votes. So sometimes in a meeting, uh, we'll take a vote. Landon, what do you want me to vote on? Oh, Landon, I think you're muted now. Thank you. Sorry. Brian, do you like Zoom meetings? I will vote yes. And I will vote no just to show people. And that way, uh, everyone can see how everyone has voted. That's on a it's not a private vote. Everyone can see who's voting and how they voted, but it is a way to get a quick and clear uh, answer from the body about what they want. Yeah, and one of the things to, that people should recognize is that you are going to have your vote next to your name. Um, it's just the same as when you would raise your hand during a meeting or, or, or say your, your vote, uh, but your, your vote will not, be a, will not be a secret, so just be aware of that. And then after the votes, the host will usually clear them all out, and then we're back to back to square one. There's a few other buttons down here. I don't know that they'll be in use in all the meetings you're part of. Uh, ways to communicate to leaders what you think of what's going on, even a way to uh, ask for a break uh, with a little coffee cup. Which might I'm going to start using the go faster button to tell people to, to to hurry up. We've we've heard enough from you, Brian. Yeah, I, I don't I don't approve of that. <laughs> no, I don't think we should be doing that. That'd be very rude. <laughs> it's also unclear to me whether the coffee cup means you need coffee or you've had too much coffee. But either way. <laughs> um, hey, can I share one more thing, Landon, that I think would be helpful to people? Absolutely, please. Chat box. Yes. A way to talk to other people during the meeting. And uh, so it will, again, pop things up. If you need... I always encourage folks not to use this very much because it can be really distracting, especially if it's a large meeting. But it can be a way to say, um, to ask a question that's of general interest. What page of the docket are we on? And when you use it, uh, your question will appear so everyone can see it. Uh, the host answer, boy, that's a long box, it's a lot of pages. Um, it is also a way to send private messages to other people in the meeting, but you need to know that um, you should be very careful with that. Um, Why is that, Brian? Well, because let's say I mean to send that message to something that someone said, except it is so easy to accidentally send that message 
to someone else. And if you're sending it to the host, it is being saved in the chat log. So um, private messages between participants are not saved in the chat log, but private messages with the host are saved in the chat log. Um, and also, um, I've, I've seen plenty of people accidentally send a private message to the whole room in real time. So my encouragement is to, for sake of not distracting people and not having embarrassing moments, to not use the chat button for you know, anything you wouldn't say out loud in the same room full of people. Yep. Sending a private message to the whole chat room is the new reply all, I think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the new... Uh, Forgetting your microphone is on. <laughs> oh boy, those are some great videos. I could watch those videos all day long. <laughs> well, that's really helpful, Brian. Um, is there anything else that you think uh, would be? Uh, th those are those are the. If people understand uh, those basics, I think that they'll have a very successful, uh, very successful meeting. Uh, so, from a technical side, is there anything else they need to be anything they need to be paying attention to? Uh, I, I don't think so. There's a, yeah. I mentioned the mute button. You can also use a stop video button, which mm. just temporarily turns off your camera so people can't see uh, if you need to step away for a moment. There's a mute trick, right? That people oh, might there find is. helpful. Glad you said that. Um, if I have myself muted. Can't hear you, can't hear you. I can hold down my space bar, mm -hmm. just put down as long as I'm talking and then let go of it again. And I'm muted again. Yep. Muted again, I said. Mm -hmm. uh, way to just sort of control your microphone on a um, short temporary basis, say a quick thing and then get out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the things that I think participants uh, would do well to remember is that these are just tools. These are just things that help us connect people to people to, to be in conversation about sometimes very important issues, sometimes not very important issues. Uh, but those are just tools and the tools change. We're just using tools for online. We have different tools for real life, but the purpose of all of these things stays the same. And that is to honor the people that you're in conversation with, the people that you're in the meeting with, uh, make sure you're giving them your attention, make sure you're paying attention and are respectful of the conversation and of the debate sometimes that is happening. Um, so m make sure that, that, that you're giving this the attention that it deserves. It's really easy, I find, um, to multitask and to do a lot of things because we're like, ah, nobody's, nobody can really see me. I got my video off and all those sorts of things. And it would be very easy for us to miss what's going on in a meeting. Brian, you and I have been in several meetings where people have been multitasking um, and sometimes it's funny, but sometimes it's it's really it's really kind of rude and really kind of offensive when they're not up to speed on what's going on, and the rest of us are ready, maybe even to make a decision, and that person then has to take even more time to get themselves up to speed. So I would encourage people to remember these are just tools. And that and that that's that is also like many of these things similar to real life. Uh, right. You know, you could choose to be out having coffee during the meeting, mm -hmm. but but realize that 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 could could be offensive to other people when you come back in and it becomes clear that you didn't weren't paying attention to what was going yeah. on. Yeah. Here's one last happy thing we can point out to people. Down at the bottom of your screen, uh, if, if you're oh, yes. to set it up, so there's a reaction button and it gives you the chance to clap and or give a thumbs up like Landon has done. Um, just a way to, since we don't, we can't all be together, we can't hear each other applauding, we can't always uh, mm -hmm. experience the warmth of a whole room laughing together. These reactions give us a way to communicate a little something um, and connect us to each other, even through Zoom. Several groups I'm a part of have adopted the the, the, the jazz hands things um, that is particularly popular in the like in the deaf community as a way of mm -hmm. applauding. Uh, that that is good. Um, okay, so these are just a real crash course, a basic introduction uh, to what you need as a participant. You may not, you may have already been familiar with a lot of these things, um, but you can trust that your pastor or your state of clerk or your executive or your committee moderator, they know what's going on. And so if you need some further help and further instruction, certainly make sure and give them a call. Brian and I are in contact with a lot of these people and they stand ready and willing to help make sure that you're participation in a Zoom meeting is as successful as it can be. Uh, Brian, thank you for taking these few moments to walk us through this. Um, I think it's really going to be helpful for folks. Landon, thank you. It was a pleasure. All right, friends. Bye-bye.